Want to know how to install a kill switch on your solar setup that fully complies with regs? Well, here's how. So as part of our solar circuits, we need to install a kill switch after the solar panels, but just before the solar charge controller. Um, as per the regs, this has to be a double pole kill switch, not a single pole. That means it will isolate both the positive and negative side of the circuit and not just the positive. As with all of our other stranded cables, we're going to need to crimp a ferrule onto the end of that cable and then we can push it into here and then we can tighten down that terminal with a screwdriver on this front face. Positive cable is going to run on the right hand side, negative on the left. We're going to have the input coming in through the top and then the output going out from the bottom. This is a 40 amp kill switch. To be able to size yours, you need to find the short circuit current of your solar panel. You'll find it on the back of the solar panel or you can actually normally find it listed on the manufacturer's website or the place that you bought it from. Then you're gonna take that number. In our case, it's 5.5 amps and you're gonna times it by the amount of solar panels that you have. We have six solar panels times 5.5 by six and you get 33 amps, <laughs> which is within the tolerance of 40 amps. Next up, I'm going to install the kill switch. I'm going to start by mounting the bat box for it. Before installing the bat box, we must pre-drill the entry points for the cables. I'm using a rubber grommet to protect them as they were particularly large at 10 millimeters thick. But the kill switch that I'll leave a link for in the description actually comes with cable entry glands that could easily accommodate most solar cables. And I'll just use a couple of screws to hold this in place. This is what the rear of the switch looks like and hooking it into position uses the same method as any RCD or MCB. So here's how it's done. You can see we've got these two hook points here that would hook onto the DIN rail. And there's this one at the bottom here, but we need to push this tab out first in order to do so. We can just hook this top section on first onto the DIN rail and the bottom and then push that tab in. And then when you want to release that, you just get a flathead screwdriver, push it into the tab at the bottom there push that against the RCD, that will unclip it, and then we can pull that back out again. So we've got our first cable here with a ferrule on. If you've never crimped on a ferrule crimp before, here's how to do it and why we do it. Trouble with these multi-stranded cables is that they are more brittle, therefore more prone to damage. If you were to just strip the end of this cable, put it in the terminal and then tighten down on it, it could actually damage some of those strands. What we do to counteract this is install one of these ferrule crimps, that's just gonna slide onto the ends of those strands and then we we'll crimp it down and it's gonna lock all of those strands together and make sure that we get a really solid connection. What I'm gonna do is grab my wire stripper here. I'm gonna extend this end out so that we've got plenty of copper strands that will pop out the end of the ferrule. Then I'll just pop the cable in. Strip it. If you don't have any or your wire is too thick, use a blade or a pair of wire cutters and carefully score around the outer insulation, being sure not to nick the cables underneath. Okay, now don't be tempted to twist the strands. What you need to do is just place the ferrule crimp directly over the top, making sure the strands stay nice and straight. There's different size ferrule crimps, obviously different size cables. I've got 2.5 millimeter square cable here. So I'm using the blue ferrule crimps. Just gonna push this crimp all the way on until the insulation of the cable butts up against this tapered part of the crimp. What I'm gonna do now is grab my ferrule crimping tool, which looks like this. And I'll leave a link in the description for one of these. I'm gonna place my cable in like so, till that tapered part is butted all the way up to the end, and then just tighten down. And then it should release once you've pushed the handle all the way in. Oop. Cut away any excess copper strands. And there you have it. So we've got our first cable here with a ferrule on. I'm gonna push that through this grommet here that's at the bottom. This first cable on the right is gonna to go to the positive side of the solar charge controller. And the second on the left here is the negative to the solar charge controller. So we've connected the output side the input side is coming directly from the solar panels. And of course, because it's light outside at the moment, there is gonna be power running through those. So if I touch those cables at this point, I'll get a little bit of a shock. So I either need to wait until it's nighttime and there's no light on them, or I need to cover the solar panels before I can work on the input side. Again, on the input side of the switch, coming from the solar panels this time, I've installed the positive on the right and the negative on the left. So now this has been safely hooked up during the night, I can replace this front cover now.
So the last thing I need to do for this kill switch is just add a little label at the bottom here. So this label just gives a warning that during daylight, there's obviously sun hitting those solar panels and therefore the parts are live. Okay, so that's the solar kill switch now complete. It's currently in the off position because my leisure battery is currently disconnected. Once it's connected, I will switch the leisure battery on first and then this kill switch. It's important that our solar charge controller is first connected to the leisure battery before it's connected to the solar panels. So while the solar is isolated, you can see we've got this crescent moon here. If I switch this on, you can see the sun appear and these arrows start to indicate the power is being pulled through the panels. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll leave a link for all the tools used in the description and feel free to check out my other videos on all things to do with DIY campers.